you are signed to the UFC, yep. but you're just kind of putting the out of test pool. Right. Oh, speaking of that, let me tell all my haters something. Oh, let me tell you guys something real quick. I never in life used a fucking steroid. So guys, Derek from ourplacemartaids.com. Today we're going to be talking about William Knight from the UFC. This guy with the fucking gargantuan 3D traps. Uh, eating his fucking head, as I like to say. He has a 9-2 record in the UFC. He is 5'10 and competes in the light heavyweight division. He has to make weight uh, and barely scrapes by to make 205. He's mentioned it in, in interviews. It would be very tough for him to make the lower weight class, and I can see why. The guy is an absolute fucking behemoth <laughs> specimen of a human. And a half. Look at this fucking shit. This guy is cranked as hell. And, um, you know, obviously he's getting a lot of hype. Not just, like, he's getting a lot of hype for the obvious reason, because he looks fucking juiced. So, a lot of people have been asking me what I think about this guy's, uh, you know, overall... I don't know, body composition, do I think it's, you know, natty? Do I think it's not? He competes in a very highly drug-tested sport. You know, he is subject to randomized drug testing on a very, very rigorous schedule. And he has mentioned in interviews how many times he's been drug-tested, as well as you can just fucking look it up on uh, the USADA database. You can actually plug in any athlete's name. See when they were tested during each quarter and how many times they were tested randomly. So, again... The obvious, you know, discussion with a guy who looks like this often arises, is he on gear or not? Um, you know, we will get to that. But first, let's look at some of his highlights so you can get an idea of exactly what this guy looks like in motion. You know, get some fucking ideas of his performance, what his physique has looked like over the years as he's, you know, progressed through his fighting career, all but relatively limited in the UFC. He's pretty much brand fucking new. But... He's a very exciting fighter. And anytime you see a guy who looks like this step in the ring, obviously, you know, it's more of a, uh, you know, spectacle than, I don't know, may otherwise draw attention to. Like, the guy is fucking crazy athletic, um, looks like a fucking bodybuilder, and is just like a gorilla, just like smashing dudes. So obviously, you know, he's going to start to, you know, draw some hype and... People just want to see him get in the ring and fucking smash dudes. And they want to know, like, is this even possible? Like, look at this goddamn guy. He's uh, very, very dangerous. He does not have a spotless record. But obviously, when he is uh, to date, you know, he's proved to be uh, pretty vicious during his wins. He has a decent amount of... Uh, I actually don't remember off the top of my head how many knockouts he has. But some of these finishes are pretty fucking hectic. And you can see how athletic he is simultaneously, too. Like, look at these splits. Look at this, like, breakdance maneuver shit. He just backflips. He fucking has crazy transitions. All while being this muscle-bound. It's very impressive. He's extremely gifted genetically. And it really begs the question, you know, is this guy doing anything, using any ergogenic aids that are outside the scope of what is, you know, WADA-approved, to uh, enhance his shit? And he's mentioned this in a podcast before, actually. He talks about his natty status specifically. But before we get to that, we're going to be getting into his ridiculous bench press numbers, too. He is claimed to have... His coach said he benched 47 reps of 225. So if you know the NFL Combine, they use 225 pounds as their metric for a flat bench press. And he supposedly did 47 reps. Now, if you go through his Instagram, you don't actually find... That said, you know, you'll find him cranking out, you know, 20 to 30 reps at 225 with relative ease, but you never see him actually doing 47 reps. So I was like, okay, well, is this just like a bullshit quote? Did he not actually do that or what? And this is actually put up in the um, subreddit. William Knight, who was posted the other day, won his fight and can do 47 reps at 225. This is posted by R Mark Raimondi. Um, William Knight is one of the pound for pound strongest people on the UFC roster, by the way. His weight room feats are legendary in New England, per Tyson Chartier. Knight once did 47 reps of 225 pounds in bench press. So apparently Brock Lesnar did 43 reps of two plates at the 2004 NFL Combine. The Combine record itself is only 49 reps, set by a 300-pound defensive tackle in 2011. And, you know, everyone in the comments section here is, you know, speculating about his uh, natty status or not. Dude is built like a truck. I'll take one of each of what he's having. <laughs> 
I suggest, people, I suggest people watch this fight in order to get a full understanding of his physique and athleticism. No picture does him justice, to be honest. Yeah, this picture isn't the best, but dude is huge. Pure chicken and broccoli, of course. Built like a bench specialist. 47 of anything is a lot. I'm sure 47 of 135 is a lot. With that said, I'm sure these reps he's doing suck. Probably dropping the weight real fast and pulling it up halfway. So then everyone's kind of talking about, you know, what they found in his Instagram, sort of the same thing I found where they couldn't find the record of the 47 reps. Uh, I'm talking about, uh, yeah, how fucking insane it is. Also a mention of gynecomastia, which we're going to be getting into shortly. And um, anyway, let's get into the actual tweet because I was like, okay, well, maybe that's a bullshit quote. Maybe that never actually happened. But in the comment section of that original tweet by Mark Raimondi, Tyson Chartier basically says, yeah, it was legit. You know, the fact that he's not opposing the uh, the quote here to me seems like he's acknowledging, yeah, that I, I did fucking say that and that actually happened or else he would correct them. So he says the same thing. You know, William Knight did 47 reps in two plates. Little known fact, coach Tyson Chartier did 48 reps <laughs> of 135. So pretty much saying, yeah, that fucking happened. Yeah, like that he did do 47 reps. NFL combine worthy. Hold my Pringles. What about his gyno though? Dude's built like an NFL player. Yeah, I once did 200 reps. Okay, never mind. Uh, what kind of flex is that? The dude has gyno injection symbol times four. So a lot of people talking about, you know, implying he's on steroids. And you can see here, this is the main reason I got tagged too. Not just his ridiculous, ridiculous physique, his ridiculous bench press numbers, but also this. This is a recent picture that was posted I just want to say thanks to everyone who believed in me. They say my hands don't work. Anyways, I love you all no matter the outcome. Thanks to my opponent. Thanks to my supporters. August 21st, his most recent fight pick. And look at the giant disparity in the unilateral gynecomastia development. It's pretty fucking obvious. The left nipple is totally clean, unaffected. And the right one, puffy as fuck. Almost, you know, almost gyno gate adesanya deja vu all over again like that's the kind of shit we're seeing here like it's pretty fucking substantial and it's pretty blatant like there's no argument here that this is blatant unilateral gynecomastia development and what is the typical cause of that in general like obviously you could have it induced through puberty you could have certain things that enhance it through you know certain drug use uh, prescriptions you know things that are going to fuck up your hormonal balance but ultimately when you see like asymmetry with gynecomastia development in guys that are obscenely muscular it's kind of hard to not think like oh you're probably using fucking anabolic androgenic steroids you're probably using something that is a potent substrate for aromatase you're probably enhancing estrogen activity in the body raising your androgen profile significantly or using something that's throwing off your balance of androgen to estrogen um, potentially suppressing you, which is then throwing you off as well if you're going to be cycling off to avert drug testing. You know, it's pretty fucking hard as a guy who looks like this to really get around and be like, oh yeah, I just randomly have gyno. You know, it's a totally fucking, you know, not not a coincidence. It's a, it, or it's just a coincidence that I happen to bench two plates for more than Brock Lesnar, more than almost every NFL player at the Combine, at least, you know, reinforced by my coach or whatever, or whoever is marketing me um, on social media and whatnot, and he's reinforcing, you know, my gym numbers, and I'm the most jack guy in the UFC, pretty much, and I have this fucking gyno development, and, like, <laughs> it, it's, it's, you know, pretty fucking damning, to say the least. So anyways, in this interview, he talks about his uh, natty status. Just kind of put me inside a test pool. Right. Oh, speaking of that, let me tell all my haters something. Oh, let me tell you guys something real quick. I never in life used a fucking steroid. Sorry for swearing. That's I okay. never used a steroid. I never, I don't even know about cycling or whatever that shit is. I'm, I'm reading these things online. I'm actually learning more from these idiots than I have in anyone because I don't use steroids. I never even knew what these things were. So I always find it interesting how guys like professional athletes will say stuff like, I've never even heard of it. Like, how the fuck would I know what that is? Like, I've, I'm hearing about it for the first time now. It's like, dude, you're a fucking UFC fighter. Do you think this is actually the first time you've ever heard of performance enhancing drug use in this sport that had it, it was fucking rampant and you're like heavily drug tested? Of course, you know what steroids are. Of course, you know 
of them. Of course, you know that they're fucking used in this sport. Like, come on, like be a, be a bit more transparent than that. Sure, you know, try and if you want to argue that you're, you know, natty, that's fine. Obviously, I'm sure this guy understands the skepticism given his ridiculous fucking genetics. Like, regardless if it's gear or not, this guy has absolutely insane genetics. No one's going to deal with that whatsoever. But he goes on a pretty fucking big rant here about why he's natty and why everyone's a fucking idiot who thinks he's not. The enhancements and stuff, they're like, oh, steroids could be used for recovery. Like, I'm literally learning from these people. So let me explain something to you guys. One, I never use steroids. My genetics and my family is ridiculous. My dad, my brother, my cousins, my cousins are six foot five and they're big too. Like, think about this. They're six foot five, six foot five and a half, six four, six three. These dudes are no joke. These are my cousins. My brother's six one. He's just like me. So you mean to tell me, me, I'm one of 14 siblings, by the way. I'm one of 14. So think about this. Me and my siblings, even my sisters. My sister Chelsea was in, um, she did gymnastics. She's a monster. You're telling me that. That means all of us are using steroids. Like, how the fuck is that what you're gathering from people implying you're on gear? Like, you have siblings that are taller than you by multiple inches. If anything, people would probably use that as evidence of, like, you stunted your growth by using shit when you were younger. Above and beyond that, because your siblings are monsters too, like... Most guys who look, use gear aren't going to get as jacked as this guy. Plain and simple. Most people don't have the genetic slash drug response to look like this guy even when they take shit. So for him to be like, my whole family looks great, therefore we're all on steroids? Like, no, dude. Not at all. You just all have great genetics. Doesn't mean you're all on fucking gear. The reason that you're accused of being on gear is because you have goddamn gatling guns for fucking traps, bro. <laughs> Because I'm and maybe the guy no. I don't know. I'm not the only athlete in my family. My I got a sister, I got cousins, the whole nine. One, two, I never use no steroids or enhancements. I don't, don't believe in that shit. Like I truly believe in my mind, even when I get sick and stuff, I don't use medicine. I I can't and I refuse to use anything that's gonna help me get better or help me heal or whatever, like medicines and stuff. I don't want to become dependent on anything because when I get hurt and I can't afford it or I can't find something, I don't ever want that feeling like, oh, I need this. I need this. Like, I don't use ibuprofen, Tylenol, none of that stuff, man. I literally don't. And it's crazy because people are really saying he, I used to cycle. You could tell by his frame. Listen, world, I was 297 pounds. 297 pounds. I started lifting weights. I tried to build up thinking lifting weights was going to get me to lose weight, but it was actually building my body. That was for the first year. Then Iron Will taught me calisthenics and cardio and diet, which why I look like this. Do not hate on me because I diet and do shit the right way and lose weight and I, my body looks like this. Like... Maybe some people are hating, but a lot of people, like, ultimately, you're competing in a highly scrutinized sport that has people trying to cheat the system, and you have one of the most enhanced-looking physiques in the entire sport, and you're extremely fucking gifted, and people want to speculate. Like, what the fuck is wrong with that, dude? If you're sitting at home, you're paying however much for a fight, and you see a guy who looks fucking soft out of his tree, I think it's fair to ask your buddy, like, hey, you think this guy's natural? Like, look at him. Like, he's pretty fucking cranked. Oh, yeah. like, I don't think so. I think so. Whatever. You know? Like, you're being put on display for the world to fucking be entertained by slash evaluate your performance or whatever. Like, I think it's totally justified for anyone to specul speculate about fucking anything, dude. I don't think anyone, well, maybe some people are hating, but I mean, like, ultimately, we're just fucking curious, you know? <laughs> like, and some people, you know, they don't want to think that somebody could naturally achieve some feet or body composition metrics that are so superior to theirs when they may otherwise not be able to get that physique on steroids even. That's definitely fucking true in some cases. But again, ultimately, people just see this shit and they want to know. I am sorry that my body looks like this. I, I'm telling you, I would choose to look a little out of shape. That way I can probably make 185. But I can't. I can't. 
got into 205 is it. That's the most healthy state of mind, the healthiest that I can do. And I'm just going to say, I'm, I'm sorry that I look like this. I'm sorry. So this guy has so much fucking muscle on his frame that he cannot possibly get into the middleweight division. He has to stay at light heavy. He can't cut the 185. It's too fucking taxing on him. And that's not necessarily like a, you know, a bad, you know, mark on his, you know, willpower or anything. Like, ultimately, if it's going to hinder his performance to cut that much fat and water, you know, that's a ROI he doesn't see as positive, and that's fine. But it's sort of like doesn't really reinforce the credibility of a guy being, you know, in the natty or not thing when you have so much fucking muscle tissue naturally that you can't possibly squeak into middleweight after depleting the fuck out of yourself at five foot ten, you know? Anyways, I'm not saying it's impossible that he's, uh, you know, natty. I was, it's like, there's a lot of fucking things stacked against him in this scenario. He's so goddamn jacked especially the body parts that respond so heavily to androgenic signaling, like in the trap specifically, like where do you have the greatest density of androgen receptors in the body? Traps are pretty fucking dense, dude. Like you see a disproportionate amount of development in this body part specifically when people abuse androgens. So again, for a guy to be like, this is totally natural, it's not the end-all be-all, but it's certainly like another thing, you know, against him in that regard. You have his coach, Tyson Chartier, saying that he benched 47 reps of 225, like comparable to that of like the peak prime fucking cream of the crop record holder NFL combine numbers with guys who weigh 300 plus shitting on Brock Lesnar. <laughs> Even like if you compare him to fucking Larry Wheels when he did a 225 bench test, like, I think he got like, like 50 reps or something. Come on, let's go! 50, bro. 50, bro. So Larry Wheels, the guy who's, uh, you know, obviously fucking not natty, super enhanced, you know? He did some lifts before this, so obviously he wasn't totally fresh, but I mean, the guy's probably on fucking Anadrol test, fucking bunch of shit, and he's one of the most it's not like he's just on gear. This guy is a genetic fucking freak of nature, also on decent amounts of gear, who can crank out 50 reps of 225. And then you're telling me a guy who's totally natty can do 47 reps of 225 whilst being this simultaneously athletic and fucking amazing in the ring, whilst simultaneously having fucking unilateral gynecomastia development, while simultaneously having these fucking... <laughs> these Gatling gun traps, like... You know, it just doesn't really bold well for him with the arguments in his favor. Like he mentions in this video here, he's like, people see my vascularity and they think I'm on steroids. Like, why the fuck would you think just because I have vascular arms, therefore I'm on gear? It's like, no, dude, that is like the least, that's like the lowest totem pole factor of this entire equation. It really boils down to your overall musculature. You can barely, you know, make weight for fucking light heavy somehow as a natural at five foot ten you bench ridiculous fucking numbers your strength metrics and athleticism are off the charts which is all genetics as well no don't get me wrong and you also have a unilateral gynecomastia development you know so like for me like it would be great to give this guy the benefit of the benefit of the doubt he is like pretty you know regularly drug tested he mentions in this interview how he was drug tested six times in 2020 and that was only in september 17th so you know if, i'm sure if i go to the usada database and I plug it in and, you know, Q3 and Q4, you know, maybe cumulatively he was tested however many times in the year. I don't know, maybe he was tested over 10 times in 2020. And maybe going to 2021, he has more, you know, of a spotlight on him because he's starting to pick up a bit more hype and whatnot. Maybe he's drug tested even more in 2021. Like, I'd have to go check that. But ultimately, they're not able to catch everything, dude. They're not able to catch everything, unfortunately. And they're doing a good job. They've definitely helped clean it up in my opinion. However, I do not think it is a totally clean sport. I think there are pretty blatant ways to circumvent the system still, things I've talked about on this channel many times. Um, do I think William Knight you know, knows that shit inside and out? No, I don't think a lot of fighters do, but ultimately I think they have people they defer to for that kind of stuff. And is he doing that for certain? You know, I don't fucking know, dude. But I mean, it's pretty hard for me to get behind and be like, yep, like, you know, he seems just like a really nice guy. Like, he's obviously telling the truth. Let's just disregard everything that, like, points to him being unnatty, you know? Like, if anyone in the fucking UFC is going to be unnatty, like, who's it going to be? Is it going to be some random fucking guy? Or is it going to be the guy with Gatling traps, 
gynecomastic development, benches more than Brock Lesnar, you know? And there's tons of guys in the UFC who take shit who you would have no idea, who don't have these kind of ridiculous numbers, who don't have these, like, these are like the most obvious flagship, like, holy shit, obvious metrics here to go by as red flags. I'm not saying that it definitively makes it, you know, definitively makes it apparent that this guy is doing something versus not. It just certainly doesn't bold well in his favor. So anyways, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Obviously a very exciting fighter. Hopefully we see, uh, you know, some more uh, positive trends from him moving forward, some more exciting fights like he has. Obviously this kind of a physique is gonna draw fucking eyeballs when he ends up, when he gets in the ring, especially if he, you know, continues to, uh, if he starts murking dudes, you know, I'm interested to see how it goes and I would love to see this guy, you know, progress. No hate at all. I'm just, you know, speculating based on, you know, what people have asked me. So again, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. All the comments help the algorithm. Much appreciated. Like, subscribe, check out my blog. MorePlaceMoreDates.com. Follow me on Instagram at MorePlaceMoreDates. Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts. If you want to support the channel, you can check out anything I'm associated with in the video description below. My TRT clinic. It's all telemedicine from the comfort of your own home. Get high quality medical oversight from doctors who actually understand what kind of diagnostics you should be getting and how to interpret those biomarkers and make uh, individualized, specific recommendations for your own current needs, regardless if that warrants, you know, pharmacology, um, endocrine parameter manipulation, if it's just a matter of lifestyle and dietary intervention changes, sleep hygiene protocols, stuff like that. We do it all return key, and I highly recommend you check it out because having a highly educated and intelligent doctor in your camp and not somebody who's just trying to make a markup on cookie cutter scripts of TRT, HCG, and anastrozole, is fucking critical. I don't know why people don't put more of an emphasis on finding a high quality doctor. It's absolutely paramount in my opinion to have somebody in your camp who is looking out for your vitality, longevity, and just overall, like your quality of life is going to dictate pretty much fucking everything in this world when it comes to your success in business, when it comes to your success in fucking anything, you know, social interactions, relationships, etc. how you feel, how you operate, how on, you know, fucking peaked out your performances based on how well your goddamn engine is running and how healthy you are. Um, a lot of it boils down to having good, high quality medical care in your corner. So definitely check it out if you want to get dialed in, regardless if you're natural, regardless if you're a fucking cranked out of your mind bodybuilder, we are non-judgmental and we are turnkey and we do it all. So check it out in the video description below, as well as Gorilla Mind, nootropic formulas, Gorilla Mode, pre-workout formulas, design myself from scratch. Recommended diet model for gaining muscle and maximizing sports performance, strength, etc. cetera. Um, as well, the clothing company that sponsors me, um, as well as anything else I'm associated with, it is all in the video description below. Help support me, help support the brand. It's much appreciated when you guys use those, the links and the coupon codes and whatnot. And yeah, thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.